Hebet Kayafa is a site located in the Judite Shefela between the highlands and the coastal plain. Jerusalem is about 35-40 kilometers to the east and when we look to the west we see the fortress of Azeka, one of the most important Judite fortresses uh, in the Shefela and then the view opens all the way to the coastal plain. In the south there is the valley of Ella which is an important feature in the region so the site is located between Azeka and the valley of Ella. The site of uh, Hibet Kayafa is an elaborate site. It is a fascinating site. also shows you how archaeology can give you all of a sudden a surprise. It is located on a hill, well fortified by casemate walls. Then the houses all adjacent to the casemate wall. And the site is big and the site is located in a strategic position because it is on the border between the Judah Chefela and the Philistine coast. So here is a question regarding political affiliation. The date of the site is no less important because according to radiocarbon studies, it may have been established in the late 11th century, but the main phase of activity here is in the 10th century BC. And once we are into the 10th century, we open you know, a Pandora box regarding biblical traditions uh, related to the 10th century BC. Because in the Bible, we have a lot of stories related to the 10th century, especially David, Saul. And it's difficult to date the biblical text, so some people would say they're much later. And here we have a site that we can date to the 10th century. So, how is this related to the Bible? Sometimes archaeology brings us sites that we don't know very well to relate. And the question is, is this in any relation to Judah, to Jerusalem, or to Saul, or even the Philistines who are not far away, or even a Canaanite independent entity? So, how do we decide this? I think that when we look very carefully at the architecture of the site and we ask ourselves where we have similar architecture in the land of Israel in the 10th century BC, we can eliminate two possibilities and concentrate on the highlands because this is typical highland architecture. Mm -hmm. So, we are left with two possibilities, in fact, main leading possibilities. One, Judah, Jerusalem, and the other one, a North Israelite territorial formation located to the north of Jerusalem. Yeah, if it's Judah, then of course it's very tempting to think about David yeah. because we have the Valley of Elah, we have uh, Gat, we have uh, Adulam, we have uh, whole traditions about David related to this area. He was in the 10th century, of course. Yeah, he so. was in the 10th century, yeah. but the problem, of course, that we have is if you look on the Bible, you see that most of the texts about him are quite late. So the question is, what can we say about the so-called historical David? Right. But we are in a not so bad position because first we have, as you know, the inscription from Tel Dan, which shows us that there is in the 9th century a house of David, which is the name for the Judahite uh, dynasty. dynasty. Yes. Of course, you cannot say it proves historicity, but still it shows that David was considered to be the founder of this dynasty. Right. And then, if you look carefully to the stories in the book of Samuel, then you have features that don't really look like being invented. So you have a David, like a mafioso, condottiore, racketing uh, villages, and being a vassal of the Philistine king of Gat. So he's, a, he's, he's sort of an apiru, apiru uh, yes. sort of a mercenary with a band of uh, warriors walking around and uh, hiring yeah, his uh, power. Exactly. This cannot be invented, I guess. And this is some memory of a 10th century day. We have two proto canaanite inscriptions from here. Can they tell us something about the possibility of composition of biblical texts in the 10th century? No, certainly not. Certainly not. First of all, the biggest inscription, nobody can really read it. Secondly, uh, this kind of inscription, we have it more on the Philistine side, in Gat, where we have many of those inscriptions. So it does not prove at all that King David was sitting here writing down the Psalms. So I think we should not consider this possibility. Okay.
So there is another way to understand this site, and this is to connect it to the tradition in the Bible of King Saul. King Saul was a ruler at the same time to the north of Jerusalem. He was a northern Israelite ruler to differ from David the Jerusalemite, the Judahite. And there is no difficulty to connect King Saul to this place for three reasons. First of all, he's in the 10th century, so chronologically it fits. Secondly, he is connected to the Valley of Elah, because if there is something historical behind the tradition of David and Goliath in the Valley of Elah, well, so the armies of Israel, of King Saul, were stationed here in the valley behind us. And thirdly, there is the material culture of the site, which features more northern characteristics than Judahites. And one example, a good example, is the casement wall behind me. Casements like this are not known in Judah, but we know them very well in several sites in the area of Gibeon, which was the hub of the territory of King Saul. So we can definitely tie King Saul to Hebet Kayafa. The question is what to do with the biblical material, the biblical traditions on King Saul. According to the Bible, we have the same problem with Saul as we have with David. It's very difficult to reconstruct the oldest text, the historical Saul. Now, if we read the text, Saul is a bad guy. He was rejected by the God of Israel in order to choose David and to make him the real king of Israel. But if you look carefully on the text, we also see that there are positive texts about Saul, how he's rescuing his people, his military skills, and also texts that show that Samuel is choosing him in order to become the king of Israel. So I think we have here an old northern tradition about the rise of the Saulite monarchy. And probably, historically, Saul and David were ruled in the same time, competition, and not one after the other as the Bible pretends. So now time has come to deal with the duel between David and Goliath at the Valley of Elah. So we are standing in this beautiful place overlooking the Valley of Elah. This is a typical biblical scene. The valley itself mentioned in the battle between David and Goliath and also the site of Soko in the background and on the other side, Azeka. So the features of the scenery are perfect for understanding this duel described in the Bible. So my question is about the biblical text. Does it reflect the realities of the 10th century? So the text in question is in the book of Samuel. This is one of the most famous texts where David is smiting Goliath and delivering Israel. The text is very nice, but if you look at it, you can see it's not earlier than the 7th century. First of all, this language of the text betrays influence of Deuteronomy, so it cannot be earlier than the 7th century, and although the textual transmission is very, very complicated, so uh, it cannot be an early text. And on the other hand, also we can observe some material features. Yes, the ambience of the text is a Greek ambience typical of the Greek mythology. First of all, the very battle between two heroes which stand in front of each other and they decide the battle and the fate of the two armies is very Greek in nature and fits the mythology. Secondly, the armor of Goliath. When one looks very carefully at the de very details of the description of Goliath, we are dealing basically with a Greek heavy soldier, the hoplite of the 7th or the 6th centuries BCE and there's nothing there that can fit the 10th century BC. My next question then is, is there after all something old, an old tradition behind this story? Yes, and the answer can be yes, because if you look carefully in the book of Samuel, we have in chapter 21 this very strange note that there was uh, Elchanan who killed Goliath of the Philistines. So this was probably the original trans tradition that was then transferred to David. And then I have a final question or a final thought. Why are they telling this story? What's going on here? Are they just naive telling a story about David and Goliath or is there some sort of ideology or a message behind it, behind describing David is the symbol of Judah fighting Goliath as a symbol of a Greek fighter, a Greek mercenary here in the valley of Elah on the border with the coastal plain. 
What do you think, uh, Thomas? Yeah, if he put the text in the 7th century, and if he think that Goliath is described as a Greek mercenary, then we can put it into relation with the Egyptian threat on Judah and the idea that the Egyptian came with the Greek. And the Philistines then become a kind of a symbol for the Greeks. So we see the complexity of the story on the background of the beautiful site of Kribet Kayafa. Thank you.